in a very unexpected series of events, Nico Heischer, the captain for the Devils, made his highly anticipated return, and he did not disappoint. The Devils dominated the Buffalo Sabres from start to finish, and maybe this could be the turning point for them. And also, let's talk about some players that usually fall under the radar, but really made a name for themselves in this matchup. We have a lot to break down in today's episode of Locked on Devils, and I have a lot of sound bites to share with you guys. Buckle up, everybody. Your Locked on Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked on Devils with Trey Matthews. All righty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on Locked On Network. I'm your host, college hockey play by play announcer, Devils Rider for Pucks and Pitchforks, and also part time credential MIA member Trey Matthews back from the Prudential Center. And man, what a game for the New Jersey Devils! They came away in dominating fashion against the Buffalo Sabres by a score of seven to two. Talk about redeeming yourself big time because. In the previous episode, I talked about how them losing to the Columbus Blue Jackets, it could have possibly been a new rock bottom for them. I was hoping that they would show some signs of life and improvement in the next game against the Sabres because this was a back-to-back game. And the the difference between this team, night and day, and obviously the storylines are many. I have a lot of sound bites to share with you guys throughout the course of the episode that I was able to obtain in the locker room. And we're going to start off with the biggest story going into the game, which was Nico Heischer and him making his triumphant return. And then in the second segment, we'll highlight some other players that also made big impacts this game. And some of the players I'm going to list, they don't really get the spotlight all that often. And when they do, it's usually for the wrong reasons, but they definitely deserve their credit for what they were able to do against the Sabres. And then in the third and final segment, to wrap it all off, like I do with every post-game recap, I will compare the stats and give the Devils a letter grade. So let's talk about the return of Nico Heischer. Now, the development of the story was actually quite interesting because we, the media members, actually found out that Nico was no longer listed on the IR according to the NHL website. So obviously, there was a lot of speculation. There was a lot of questions as to whether or not Nico was going to make uh, his highly anticipated return to action, but you don't want to jump the gun on anything. So I was actually talking to Mike Moriel of NHL.com up in the press box. We were obviously discussing the possibility of Nico returning. I don't want to speak for other media members, but I'll speak for myself. I was optimistically cautious about the possibility of Nico returning to action because the thing is, Lindy never really gave some clear indication as to whether or not Nico would be returning because I feel as though the last couple of days he's been very low key about uh, revealing the injury situations for the Devils players. So I was just like, uh, they're probably going to give Nico one more practice, see how he's doing, and then maybe the, he'll suit up in the game on Tuesday against the New York Islanders. But nope, I guess desperate times call for desperate measures, and that's exactly the phrase I I told Mike, which was. I think the Devils, they are a little desperate. I think Nico also realizes it too. So maybe it's time to see if he could give the Devils a kick in the rear because it's been quite evident the last couple of days that the Devils have been lacking some heart. They've been lacking some direction. It seems like the system hasn't been working for them. And obviously the system is built around Nico Heischer and also Jack Hughes. So when you're missing one of those pieces in which the system is built around, it sometimes uh, puts an alter in in the overall execution. So during pregame, Nico Heischer was warming up alongside with Andre Pilat and Jesper Bratt. And I heard the cheers around the Prudential Center. Everybody was excited, but obviously it was not official quite yet. They still had to see like, was Nico good to go? And as soon as he gave the clearance saying, I'm all good, Amanda Stein wrote it down on her notepad saying that Nico Heischer was back and that he was officially going to be in the starting lineup. So that was obviously a turn of events because 
Like I said, on my end personally, I was not anticipating for Nico to suit up in the game against the Sabres. I thought that they would probably give him one more practice or at least Lindy the past couple days would say like, and eh, Nico might return within these next couple games or, or something like that. But clearly that did not happen, but I'm certainly not going to question it. Now, the big thing was how huge of an impact was Nico Heischer going to make? Because he is returning from injury, but he's a very good player. So I kept my expectations somewhat moderate. I was just like, he sure will have an impact, but it's not going to be like that quick of an impact. I was just like, let's just like crawl before we walk. He sure has missed the last 11 games. So let's give him some time. But no, right out the gates, the Devils, I guess the best word that I could use to describe them, they were electric. This was like the Devils team that I saw last year. They were playing fast paced. They were playing aggressive. It seemed like their defense has also picked up as well. And lo and behold, Alexander Holt scored the first goal of the game. And I believe that was the first time since November 7th in which the Devils scored the opening goal. And this time they actually won it. So the Devils got the scoring early and they had their foot on the gas pedal. And you could just tell that the Devils were playing with much more confidence. And it seemed like the structure, like I just said moments ago, the structure of the system was much better. So I had the chance to ask Lindy Ruff post game about Nico Heischer's return and how do you build off that momentum going into the next matchup so that way the Devils down the line can start to rack up more wins consistently. Here's what he told me. Seems like uh, the team had a lot of uh, boost of confidence when Nico was inserted back into the lineup. How do you guys um, carry that momentum uh, going forward to try to rack up uh, more wins? Yeah, again, one 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 game at a time. Uh, as I said, you know, Nico's an important player. Uh, get makes us deeper, makes us better defensively, makes us better offensively. Um, you know, we can keep some of the other top defenders off. You know, making a choice of who they want to who they want to try to check. Uh, so there's an impact, and it pushes guys back in their slots down the lineup. Now, Nico was asked about the team's impact of his presence, of being on the rink, and how they played a lot better. And I followed up by asking, like, what it was it like receiving that reception from the fan base? And similar to the question I asked Lindy Ruff, I asked him, "How do you maintain this momentum going forward?" Because I want the Devils to build off of this. I don't want this to be a repeat from the Pittsburgh Penguins game where the Devils get a big win and then they go on another three-game losing streak. So obviously there's still some work that needs to be done, but it seems like the Devils are heading back in the right direction, especially with their two superstars back into the lineup. Here's what Nico had to tell me. Did you feel the excitement when, when you were in the Yeah, I mean, I love the boys. Uh, it's, uh, it's, I mean, yeah, my Made me a little red for sure. Uh, I mean, uh, I love them, and uh, it's so great to see them supporting me uh, that much. So, not only, oh, sorry, not only uh, did you see, uh, did your team receive a big um, boost in, in your return, but seems like the fans also embraced you and welcomed you back. What was it like just seeing that reception when you uh, returned onto the rink? <laughs> great, obviously. I think uh, you see a lot of energy, and uh, we got great fans here, and. Uh, Love the support from them and uh, love to be in here and love to be a devil. So uh, it's great to, be, great to be back. Obviously, the last few weeks have been a bit of a struggle for your team and you guys picked up a big win now that you and Jack are back on to the rank. How do you guys maintain this momentum going forward? Just uh, have a good day off tomorrow, then come in for practice and uh, get better there and uh, get ready for the Islanders game. Now, Gianni, New Jersey Devil, put this out on the X app. He said, there's been panic from this fan base during this losing streak. Nico Heischer and Jack Hughes are the Devil's two best players and the cornerstones of this team. They played a total of eight games together this season. The Devils are 5-2-1 and one in those games. Great win, Jersey. So I do agree with Gianni. I think that there's definitely been a lot of panic from the Devil's discourse, and I'm definitely no exception because – I knew that losing both Heischer and Hughes for an extended period of time, I knew it was going to hurt the Devils. I just didn't anticipate for it to be this bad. And I think I sort of underestimated their true impact for the roster. I'm not saying that they weren't good players. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying like 
I was expecting for players like Jesper Bratt, Timo Meyer, Tyler DeFoley, Dawson Mercer. I was expecting for them to launch into bigger roles because those players I just listed, they are capable top six players. And, and I think any team would love to have players of their essence on their roster. And then I was like, the goaltending stays the same. The defense stays the same. So I was like, it's not going to be perfect. And I just said, my goal for the Devils is just tread the water a little bit, try to hover around 500. And this is a good first step. I'm not going to deny it. This is definitely a good step for the Devils. And unlike the Pittsburgh Penguins game, it was not an upset victory because now the Devils got their two superstar players back. And I think this can definitely be a turning point in the season. Now, just bear with me momentarily. Let's say the Devils go on like a lengthy win streak. They're back to top of the Metropolitan Division. And then somewhere down the road, like let's just say that they're the newly favorite team to win the Stanley Cup and they end up winning. This is just a big, wishful, hypothetical scenario. So please take this with a grain of salt. But if the Devils were to hypothetically win the Stanley Cup, then I think you would be looking back at this game as the pinnacle moment of their season when it turned around. Because like I just said moments ago, the energy was a lot different for the Devils. The system was a lot different. The execution was a lot different. And Lindy Ruff even discussed it during his post-game press conference that when you get Nico Heischer back, not only does he add a new dynamic offensively, but he does the same thing defensively as well. Because remember, Nico is a glorified two-way player. And the thing that Lindy said is that when Nico's on the rink and he plays a lot of minutes, you don't have to put your best two defensemen on the rink because Nico can do a lot of that heavy lifting because he's great at both ends. And I underestimated that. I didn't think of it in that sort of aspect. So getting Nico back not only will help the Devils offensively, but clearly it's helping them defensively as well. And Lindy can get back into that structured system built around his two superstar players. And I think that can definitely be a turning point for the Devils. Now, the key thing is that they got to stay healthy. Obviously, they got to get Timo Meyer back. They got to get Tomas Nosek back. And Eric Halla got dinged up in this game as well. Curtis Lazar did not suit up either. So we're going to have to see like how those two situations pan out. Hopefully, these next couple of days of rest can help them. But the Devils are heading in the right direction. But as long as that they have Nico and Jack at the helm, I think they're going to be just fine moving forward. Okay, so like I do with all of my post-game recaps after a win, I'm going to name my three-star players of the game. But first, let's give some honorable mentions. Let's give some shout-outs to some players who deserve them. So let's begin with Alexander Holtz, who got the party started for the Devils. And I think it's safe to say, that Alexander Holtz has definitely shown the improvement that was heavily talked about during the off season because I'm starting to see his impact a little bit. Josh Reince of the Hockey Writers put this out on the X page app. He said, what a difference a year makes. So 2022, 2023, Holtz appeared in 19 games. He had three goals, one assist for a grand total of four points. And then 2023, 2024, fast forward a year later, 19 game appearances, six goals, three assists, nine points. And once again, it seems like Holtz is a lot more comfortable out on the rink. He's a lot quicker. He's a lot faster. I know we uh, glorify his shot mechanics, but in this case, he was actually cleaning up the mess in front of the doorstep, right place, right time. And this is his second straight game with a goal. And this is what I want to see from Alexander Holtz. He doesn't have to be like the Philip Forsberg player that everyone was comparing him to when he was drafted. I want him to be an impactful bottom six player. And the fact that he is a former seventh overall pick, I think that can do the Devils a lot of good. So if Holtz wants to uh, keep his name out of the trade discussions, he needs to continue to do what he's doing, which is just be impactful, especially on the bottom six, be that main source of scoring for the Devils in terms of their depth. So have to give a shout out to Alexander Holtz. And I had the chance to ask him post game, what role does he want to play now that Jack and Nico are back into the mix because they're going to do a boatload of the point production? Here's what he told me. Seems like your game has uh, really picked up the last few uh, outings. How would you like your role to be uh, going forward now that Nico and Jack are back into the lineup? Uh, I just want to be, yeah, 
get a be a consistent goal scorer out there. Uh, I don't want to have the slumps. I just want to keep producing every game. So I feel like that is yeah the biggest part I'm going to take out with me. Once again, I just want Holtz to have a very good impact for the Devils on the bottom six. And I definitely think he's done that to begin the season. Now, the second player I want to give a shout out to is Dougie Hamilton. So in the previous episode, I brought up the hypothetical question, should Dougie Hamilton be a healthy scratch? Because he was one of the main reasons as to why the Devils lost two to one to the Columbus Blue Jackets, because he was on the rink for both of those goals. And both of them resulted in a defensive lapse on his end. Obviously he doesn't deserve the full blame, but given the fact that Dougie is notoriously known for maybe being lackadaisical on defense, maybe taking a playoff, maybe getting himself out of the play, which results in the Devils just having a big gaping hole in their defensive execution, it did raise a question, should Dougie be a healthy scratch? And I said, it is very unlikely. Maybe Lindy would consider it, but maybe just only for like a split second because the thing I said is that Dougie Hamilton knows how to redeem himself offensively, and I think that can make up for some of his defensive blunders, and he was able to do so in this game. So he got the secondary assist on Alexander Holtz's uh, first goal, and he actually finished with two assists in this game, so he was one of many Devils players to have multi-point performances. So I just want to give out to, a shout-out to Dougie for redeeming himself because that's what I said in the last episode, which was Dougie can redeem himself and I think he did so in this game. And the fact that he redeemed himself fairly quickly into this game, once again, he he got the secondary assist on Alexander Holtz's goal. I think he was definitely searching for it, and he just needed some sort of story arc just to turn it around a little bit because I'm sure it was frustrating knowing that a lot of people were crapping on him for the overall loss against the Blue Jackets. Even Lindy Ruff said in his post-game press conference that Hamilton's performance was not all that good. So, just wanted to give my appreciation to Hamilton. Like I said in the previous episode, big fan of his game. Now, the third player that I want to give a shout out to, and the reason why I'm giving him a shout out and not making him one of my three stars is because I need to highlight some other players that have been having a silent but good impact, and that is Tyler DeFoley. So Tyler DeFoley finished with two goals. Now, Lindy was asked about Toffoli's performance this season and how he's fit in with the devil system. And basically, Lindy says that Tyler Toffoli is just the veteran player that you want on your roster. He's been around the block before. He knows what to do. And once again, he was just one of those players where it seemed like he had some newly added energy once he saw his captain back into the lineup. So Tyler Toffoli has been one of the main goal getters for the Devils. And tonight's performance was no exception. So he already has 11 goals total this season. And it seems like he's leaking over from what he did in his final year in Calgary to the Devils. And he's definitely been a boost to the offense for the Devils. Despite him not being the quickest out on the rink, he definitely makes up for it for his high hockey IQ. And that's something that Lindy said in his post-game press conference. So wanted to give a shout out to Tyler Toffoli. Okay. So here are my personal three stars of the game. My third star, Andre Palat. And here's why. Did you know that Andre Palat in his last six games has six points? So he finished this game with a goal and an assist. So in 19 game appearances, Palat has 10 points. He has two goals and eight assists. I think we need to have a discussion about Palat and his playmaking ability because He's been actually creating good looks for his teammates, including Nico Heischer. He was one of the reasons why Nico Heischer was able to score in this game because Heischer did make the primary steal, which we'll talk about momentarily, like very soon. But Palat set him up on a dime. So my thing for Palat is like, yes, is his contract expensive? Absolutely. But at the same time, I think he has definitely been contributing and he's been pulling his weight especially during these last few games, because prior to this game, these last three stretches of games for Devils, it's definitely been a rough patch, but I think he's been one of the minor bright spots. So I need to definitely show some appreciation towards Andre Pilat. That's why he's one of my three stars. So last six games, he has six points. Think about that. And why aren't enough people talking about that? I feel like we need to have a bigger discussion about that. So people are quick to point out his blunders. People are quick to point out his contract, but when he's actually contributing very consistently, nobody really wants to talk about it. 
my second star, Brendan Smith. Now, before I explain why, I got three words to say to Brendan Smith. And I think I speak for a lot of the devil's discourse. I am sorry. Brendan Smith, you earned your payday this game. And honestly, I think he's better suited at a winger position for the devils. Now, I said in the previous episode that I was very skeptical about putting Brendan Smith on the winger position. I was very skeptical about him being a forward. Now, I know he has some past history of playing forward, but I just say, like, I don't know if that's going to be the best case scenario for him. Maybe he should just be a healthy scratch. But no, in this game, he showed why Lindy made that call because he was holding his own at the winger position because at one point during the first period, he actually set up Jack Hughes quite nicely, and it actually resulted in a delayed penalty call assessed to Buffalo. So once again, passing over to Jack Hughes and Jack Hughes drawing the penalty That all began with Brendan Smith, but it gets even more interesting. So the Devils get the extra attacker, and they were being a little cautious with the puck. They were passing it around their offensive end. I think they were just waiting for the Buffalo Sabres to touch the puck so that way the Sabres could go on the PK and the Devils could try to reset their offense and go on the power play. But they were being a little too conservative, and I started to hear the crowd yell at the Prudential Center, shoot, shoot, shoot. And that's exactly what Jack Hughes did. He slid the puck in front of the net and Brendan Smith and Dawson Mercer searched for the puck and they kicked it over to Tyler Toffoli and Toffoli batted on in, which resulted in Toffoli getting his first of two goals of the game. So two great plays by Smith. First, the initial setup to Jack Hughes to get the penalty drawn against Buffalo. And then during uh, that uh, event in which the Devils had the extra attacker and their net was empty, Brendan Smith got an assist onto Foley's goal. And that was Smith's like first point in like forever. Like you would have to go back to last season. So obviously this is his first point this season. I can't remember the last time Smith actually registered a point. I think it was during the playoffs actually uh, against the Hurricanes, if, if my memory serves me well. But needless to say, Smith definitely earned his uh, respect in this game early on in period one because he was playmaking. He was helping out his teammates, but I think the big thing why we love Smith this game was his assertive nature. So towards the end of period one, he sees Connor Clifton and both of them drop the mitts. Now, here's the thing. It wasn't really a fight. No punches were drawn, but Smith still won the battle because he slammed Clifton down to the ground WWE style. Now, if you need some context as to why Devils fans were kind of excited for Smith body slamming Clifton is because why was Nico Heischer out the past 11 games? It was because he took a dirty cross check to the head at the hands of Connor Clifton and Clifton actually had to face some repercussions from the league as a result of that. So he was definitely public enemy number one during this game because anytime he touched the puck, you could just hear the booze ignite throughout the Prudential Center. And once again, it wasn't a fighting major, but both of them were assessed roughing minors. So even though it wasn't an NHL standard fight, Smith still won the battle by slamming Clifton onto the ground. And I'm sure he hollered the words, don't touch my captain ever again. So Brendan Smith, I speak for all of Devil's Discourse. I take everything I said about you back. I am sorry. And now my first star. I'm going to give it to Curtis. I'm just joking. It obviously has to go to Nico Heischer because what a storybook return for the captain. So let's talk about this miracle on ice moment for Nico. So obviously he was the hero in this game before the game even started because you could hear the cheers. You could hear the applause from the crowd. And during the course of period one, remember, Connor Clifton is the one that did Nico dirty a few weeks back, and and that's what sidelined Nico these past 11 games. He stripped Connor Clifton and scored on an open net. It wasn't a pretty finish, and he did slip up a little bit, but thanks to a great setup from Andre Palat and Jesper Bratt, Nico Keisher, you couldn't have scripted it any better. But I think the big thing that just needs to be talked about is that he stripped Clifton, which resulted in that goal. So that was just amazing to see. And According to Ryan Novozinski of NJ.com, he said that Nico scored 
on the 13th shot of the game. And a little later, Nico Heischer got an assist on Andre Palat's goal. So Nico, multi-point performance. Devils win in dominating fashion. They ha- probably have one of their best defensive efforts during the course of the season. And it seems like this could be the turning point for the Devils season. And you get your captain back. You get the fan favorite back. You get people excited and buzzing once again. And nobody was expecting it, might I add. I don't think Nico's teammates were even expecting it because when we were talking to like Tyler Toffoli or Jonas Siegenthaler or whomever in the dressing room, it seemed like a, a lot of them were just uh, just as surprised as we were and were just waiting to see if Nico would be good to go. So like I've said in a past episode, good things come to those who wait. And I think Devils fan base, they definitely, definitely deserved this victory so it's obvious the captain is my first star of the game now obviously i've been talking a lot about the devils's offensive execution but similar to what i said in the previous segment i think we need to give a lot of credit to their defense because at around the halfway mark of the game the sabers only had five shots on vtech vancheck and by the end of the period they only had six and then come the end of the game They only had 12. So the defense did a phenomenal job of smothering the Sabres on the offensive attack. I'd say the only blunder that I have for the Devils this game is that they allowed for the Sabres to score two power play goals. And coming into this matchup, the Devils were ranked 17th in the NHL in penalty kill. So they definitely have to get a little bit better in that category. But like I said, not trying to complain too much. But anyway... The defense did a great job against Buffalo. And when you look at the hits, it is astonishing. 34 to 9 in favor of the Devils. So the Devils were just asserting themselves against the Sabres. And maybe that can also be a confidence booster for the defensemen. And like Lindy said, Nico has a big impact defensively as well. So I had the chance to ask Yona Siegenthaler, similar to what, what I asked Brendan Smith, in the previous matchup, which is like, what does the defense need to do in order to build off of this? Because they need to stop giving up odd man rushes. They need to stop giving up open breakaways. They need to stop their defensive lapses. Here's what Jonas Siegenthaler had to tell me post game. Jonas, I uh, talked with uh, Brendan yesterday about the odd man rushes and sometimes uh, having the defensive lapses. But in this game, you guys really improved the, the hits and also just not giving the Sabres a chance to shoot the puck. How do you guys carry that defensive effort from this game moving forward so that way you guys can get back to winning a little bit more consistently? Yeah, I mean, uh, today was, uh, you know, it just felt good uh, playing the right way. Uh, getting those points and uh, I think you know uh, we got the feeling tonight uh, uh, how we how we need to play and uh, as I said we just got to do it more consistent uh, you know we gotta just play simple play hard and uh, you know a chance will come and uh, I think the games before we maybe tried to f- force force maybe a little bit too much um, but uh, you saw it tonight if we play uh, the right way uh, in every uh, zone, uh, we get the reward with the uh, chances. Let's see if the Devils can continue to build from this. Right now, like I said, heading in the right direction, and I'm really excited to see where they can go. So let's compare the stats and get out of here. Shots on goal differential, 38-12 to 12 in favor of the Devils. Face-off percentage, 57.1% in favor of the Devils. 42.9% for the Sabres. Power play, once again, Sabres had two power play opportunities and they capitalized on both of them. So that's a little concerning that VTAC Banachek only saw 12 shots, but two went past them. But like I said, the Devils were on the PK. So I don't know how much of that blame you could put on VTAC, but I'm not trying to nitpick at this point. Devils were one for one in their power play thanks to Luke Hughes. So Luke Hughes, another Devil who finished with a multi point performance, he had an assist and once again, a power play goal. Hits 34 to 9 in favor of the Devils, like I said moments ago. Blocks 19 to 9 in favor of the Sabres. Okay, well, whatever. The Devils shot the puck a lot more. So if I had to give this game a rating for the Devils, I would normally lean towards a B plus just because their penalty kill needs to improve a lot more. But in this case, I got to embrace the madness. And I I think it would be foolish of me to not say anything lower than an A 
just because of what this game meant and the overall execution from this Devils team once they got their captain back and also Nico's miracle moment of just going from an unexpected start to now becoming a hero once again and getting this Devils team back on track. So I once again, I think it, I would be out of my mind if I didn't say A. So the Devils get an A after back-to-back failing performances. They finally shot themselves up by a bunch of levels, and it's an A for them. So a dominating victory from start to finish from this Devils team, and let this be a building block for them. Don't regress, similar to what happened after the Penguins game. Try to build off of it and try to rack up more wins. They got the Islanders next Tuesday, and that could also be an interesting matchup. So in the Metro, yes, the Rangers are kind of running away with it for first place, but other than that, it's still anybody's game. It's very tight right now. So once again, aside from the Rangers and aside from the Blue Jackets, any team can can uh, try to climb their way in the Metro. So we'll see what happens. But as for this episode, that's all I'm going to have for you. I got to make my way out west in a couple of days, but don't worry. I have something special on my sleep. I might be traveling with the Devils to one of their road locations within the next week or two when they head out west once more. So I'll keep you guys updated. But as for today, that's all the time I have for you. So continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day, New Jersey. Go Devils. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thanks for listening once again. Had a great time meeting some of you at The Rock, and I hope to see more of you as the season progresses. But thanks for listening once again.